Hello, my friends. It's me, Chris Biffle, Coach B. And do we have a show for you tonight? If you've got back talking kids, and I hope you do, because tonight we're going to give you some help. Here we go. Let me get my screen set up. I'm even going to let you watch me set up my screen. I'm going here. I'm going to click on this link up here, which gives me a great big text box. And then I'm going right here, my friends. Here's the show. Moving the screen over. Right there. Whole Brain Teaching Masterclass, Week 10, my dear companions. Week 10 of 13 weeks. Each program teaches you one power technique. And tonight, we have a special zingy bonus for you at the end of the program. I'm going to take you to Teaching's Crossroads and give you the big choice. Also coming up, a brain fact. Another shot of dopamine, please, please, please. Coming up also, our mystery lesson. This is a segment that's getting very popular. I'll tell you about when Coach B, that's me, met Cesar Chavez on a moonlit road. Anybody out there excited about any of these upcoming segments? All right, here we go. We're also going to play tonight a round of You Bet Your Wibby. Anybody remember You Bet My Your Wibby? You're going to play it tonight. It's just one thing after another. March 12, I like the brain facts too. Here's the book. Go out and buy it yesterday. Lots of funtricity. My friends, please go to Amazon.com and write a pleasant review of our book. Here is the latest on whole brain teaching. 108,000 registered members, 4 million views on YouTube, 10 million pages downloaded. We are one of the world's most popular education websites. Why are we so popular? Because we're free and we're fun and we're effective. I wish effective started with F so I could go free, fun, and effective. Here's the Facebook stuff. Facebook is blowing up. 500 likes a day. That means by 2015, I'm running for president on the Wibby ticket. It's going to have 10% of all the educators in the U.S. in two years. Will be likes on Facebook. What if someone wants a copy of these slides or needs professional development certificate? Biffy, Bluebird, good to have you. Good to be here, Coach. Easy breezy, lemon squeezy. Details are at the end of this program. Smarty Wonderbeak, I'm always happy to see you. Happy to see you, Coach. My friends, if you need a copy of the slides, stay tuned. Here's the deal. Check it out right now. There are the levels. It's like a video game. Level one is a scoreboard that was webcast 562. Level two is the super improver team. Level three is practice cards. We did that last week. 
and level four is the guff counter. Level one, two, three, and four. How many people out there are using the scoreboard at the rate of at least 30 marks a day? Because if you're not using the scoreboard, you should be. I'll talk to my online audience. How many people, 30 marks a day on the scoreboard? I'm taking a drink. That's right. B Marvin, I want you to pick it up. That's from me to you, Marvin. A Lynch too, bring it on. Bree Babs, yes. Rick Ferg, 57. Give me about 10 more. Tall man, 60 marks a day is not too many. All right. Now, my friends, who's using the Super Improver team? If you don't know Super Improver, look at Webcast 563. And my friends, if you're using it, tell people how wonderful it is. Way to go, Michelle. Let's talk about the guff counter. Now, the guff counter works if you've been using the scoreboard. So all the more reason to use the scoreboard to stop your back-talking kids. Here it is. The guff counter. Here's how it works. The guff counter, incidentally, is one of our oldest tools. We sat down in 1999 and we said, we got to stop the back talk. I was having back talk in college. Andrea Schindler was having back talk in kindergarten. Got to do something about it. Here's how it works. There's Marge. I don't think you guys have seen Marge in a while. She says, what should I do if I've used the scoreboard, the super improver team, and practice cards, and students still backtalk me? Marge, you've got a problem. I do, coach. What should I do? Marge, just stay tuned. I'm going to tell you what to do. I thank you so much, coach. Marge, it's time for level four, the guff counter. Here's two of our bluebird friends. What's guff? Is that like real loud tweeting? Guff is back talking, complaining, sighing, eye rolling, groaning, any disrespectful behavior. And here's the wonderful moment with a live online audience. Give me an example of back talk you heard today, my teaching friends. Live online audience, give me an example of back talk. And I'm going to get myself calmed down with another shot of California Clear. Yes, Lutz, you have to do that. Veterans Day no school. So <laughs> you are safe today. I forget that there's some of you people out there who are teaching and who value days off. Oh, do we have to? Yes, Doreen. Is that that's Doreen from Latin America. Doreen, I cannot believe your Latin American kids in El Salvador know how to back talk. But I was just Griffin, LA5. You're right. A Lynch, too. You know what? We're going to see more of that. I think the number of assaults on teachers is on the rise. Yeah. We got to write all of this. Yes, K Pat. You guys must be real live teachers because you got some excellent back talk. Here's the thing look at the screen. 
How do you introduce the guff counter? You're using the scoreboard. Use it, use it, use it. Don't go to the guff counter until you're using the scoreboard at about 20 or 30 marks a day. Then you're going to put up level four, whatever level you're at. You define guff, any disrespectful behavior. You use role reversal to demonstrate guff. And then you ask for examples of guff displayed by other kids, not our class. So you'll say, John, tell me to work harder. So John says, Mr. Biffle, work harder. And I'll say, I am working harder. See? Demonstrate the guff. Roll the eyes. <sighs> Sigh. Demonstrate, demonstrate, demonstrate. And then say, Boys and girls, have you seen kids in any other classes use guff, backtalk? First, get it out there. What do we mean by this stuff? A lot of hard breathing, says uh, Cretia. <sighs> yeah, that's guff. It drives us crazy. Here's the screen again. So, let's keep going. How do you demonstrate the guff counter? You ask a student to respond with guff when you say, please sit up. Ooh, deliberate guff. Yes. Demonstrate the wrong behavior. Demonstrate, demonstrate, demonstrate the wrong behavior. When you get the wrong behavior, here is the tipping point. You say, the kid says, I am sitting up. You say, great guff, four words. And then you mark four frownies in the guff counter. Now you have everyone's attention. This is the key point. You must use the scoreboard and mark one mark at a time for a week or two or a month or two. Because then when you put four marks in the frowny column, it's shocking. You say, well, four words of guff. One, two, three, four. Oh my goodness, it has an electrifying effect. It got them in college, my friends. It shook them to the bottom of their Doc Martens. See, I'm hip. I know what Doc Martens are, at least it used to be Doc Martens. Now pay attention because you're going to blow this. Pay attention. Pay attention. It's not what you think. Marge says, sounds great. Could you go over that one more time? All right, Marge. Add level four and guff to your scoreboard, whatever level you're at. Explain that guff is any disrespectful behavior and demonstrate examples. Ask a student to respond with guff as a sample, as a sample, tally one frowny mark for each guffing word. Now it gets subtle here, don't blow it. What's the next step? Explain. Students guff. I'm going to go in tight on this because I want you to be able to read it. This is your next step. I'm going real tight here. Explain. Students guff because they believe they have the silent support of the whole class. So the whole class should get a frowny. Then you role play a good student. But Mr. Biffle, we don't support the guffer. You say, maybe some of you are thinking that. I see you thinking that you don't support the guffer. Well, I know you don't really support that guffer. Then you never then demonstrate the please stop. Ask a student to demonstrate guff and your students hold their hands up rapidly and exclaim, please stop. 
Practice this several times until the please stop is loud and fast. Here's the routine. Here is the routine. Put the guff counter up. Ask for guff. Mark one mark for each guffing word as a sample. Then say, well, you silently supported that guff. Maybe you don't support that guff. If you don't support the guff, I want you to say, please stop. Then go over that several times. Kids, even your rowdy kids, your prime guffers would love to say to another kid, please stop. That's the key. Positive peer pressure, as Mrs. Shipley says. Cresha, it's not going to work if you're not using the scoreboard. If they don't care about the scoreboard, the guff counter is just an extra thing not to care about. Here's the screen. Demonstrate the please stop. Explain, when you hear me say that sounds like guff, then do the please stop, and no one but the guffer will get a penalty. In an actual practice, we don't even penalize the guffer. Kids will love stopping the guffer. Soon they will be too eager. Then explain, only use the please stop when you hear me say that sounds like guff. Once you drop this bomb and you explain the guff counter, you're going to hear kids going, please stop, please stop, please stop. At the slightest little thing, that's what you want. You've lit their fuse. <laughs> Say to them, I'm glad to see that you're responding to guff, but only say please stop when I say that sounds like guff. Take a look at the screen. <coughs> All right. Important point. Is everyone paying attention? This is an important point. Here comes Coach B, me. Never mark actual guff tally marks. One mark for every guffing word will throw your scoreboard for a loop. Don't actually do it. The idea is not to punish guff, but to unite the class behind your leadership and isolate the guffer from the support of her homies. As soon as you say that sounds like guff or where's my guff marker, everyone will say, please stop. You don't go to the scoreboard then and start racking up points. It's the only thing we threaten and don't follow through on. Because what do we want? We want class unity. Class unity is more important to us than anything else, maybe. So when we got the please stop, we have the class unified. And your rowdiest kids will be the fastest with the please stop routine. Thus, as soon as you hear back talk say, that sounds like guff to me, or where is my guff marker? This will trigger please stop from all your kids. Even the guffer's friends will be quick to explain please stop. Having a special marker you use only for guff is a great idea. So like if you had a marker and you said, this is my guff stick, where's my guff stick? As soon as you say that, oh, please stop. It's fun. Here's a summary. Demo the guff, demo guff marks, demo please stop. Never make guff marks. One mark for every word of guff will throw your scoreboard out of whack. <clears throat> Train students to say please stop on your cue. We've done this all across the country. Mrs. Shipley says all she has to do is touch her ear. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I hear a student whine. I go like that. See, I don't get it closer, closer, closer. And then I go like that. And they say, please stop as soon as I do that. 
I just thought that up. Give me a ten finger woo. Uh, the word guff, I don't know. I'm from Missouri. Anybody else ever heard the word guff? How long should I wait before I start the guff counter? That's what we want to know. How long do we wait? I've got an answer for you. Here's the answer to all your questions. When should you do what? It's your classroom. That's when you use to do it. Now here's a new, even my veterans haven't seen this, timeline. Check it out. Wouldn't it be cool, even though it's your classroom, to see an approximate timeline of when you should introduce what in whole brain teaching? Who could dig seeing a timeline? Let's say we've got a class of sweeties. What would their timeline look like? Here's a timeline. Check it out. Day one, you're going to use the scoreboard all year through Christmas. Stay there and use it over Christmas. To the last day. This is if you got a real good class. Day 10, go to Super Improvers all year. Lindsay. Nancy, Blizzard, is this about right for you? You got a real good class. Scoreboard, of course, the first day. Super Improver about the end of the second week. Now, if you've got some real good kids, don't start the practice cards until early January. And I would go with the guff counter after about six or eight weeks. Don't go to the guff counter, Marvin, if no one gives you guff. You don't need it. One minute practice cards are not a bad idea. So this is if you've got a class of sweeties. Here's another timeline. How many people out there have got a class of sweeties? Own up so that we know that you can't complain all year. Who's got some sweeties? Dude, Jill's got sweeties. B. Marvin's got sweeties. Yamagrams doesn't have any sweeties. 95% of them. All right. Now, let's say you've got a class of rowdies. What's the timeline look like for the rowdies? Same thing, scoreboard day one, super improver day 10, get the practice cards going in October. Get the guff counter going at the end of the third week. You see, dial it in depending on your class. I just thought up the timeline. I'd love a 10-finger woo from you guys because I think it's useful. We usually say you figure it out. Why don't we figure it out for you? Who's got rowdies? This is assuming school starts late August. Thank you, my friends. I am susceptible to praise. Sarah, you're right. Dial it in for each class. Here's Marge again. But how are all these levels related? Scoreboard is for the class as a whole. No reward but bragging rights. Super improvers is for individual improvement. No reward but the joy of rising higher and higher. 
practice cards for individual penalties and rewards, and the guff counter to stop individual backtalk. This may be supplemented with white cards. Give them a white card for backtalk and not a smart choice, or a purple card if they're stopping their own backtalk, or a super improver star because they're advancing into gufflessness. Here's a true story. Teacher tells me we're using the guff counter, using the guff counter, using the guff counter. Timmy, who's a guffer, says something like, I'm tired, and then he goes, please stop. He please stops himself. Is that beautiful? Yeah. All right, my friends, another important point. The levels don't replace each other. Use the scoreboard and the Super Improvers team. Then with Sweeties after Christmas, use the scoreboard, the Super Improvers team, the practice cards, and the guff counter. Introduce the guff counter ahead of schedule if you have a class of rowdy rascals. Now you may say, and I'm feeling your vibes out there, Coach B, why so many different systems? You know why. You start a system, I don't care what it is, in August or September, is dead wood by October. It's called habituation. Kids get habituated to identical stimulus. This is why after you send a kid to the office four times, the fifth time doesn't phase them. They're habituated to the stimulus. Why do you think almost all video games have levels, have power-ups? Because they understand what we don't. Repeated identical stimulus produces numbness to that stimulus. That's why we've got levels. We were forced to levels by challenging kids. Find something that works, and then find something else that works, and then find something else that works. And pretty soon, it's the end of the year. That's why. Video game levels. All right, here's our standard feature. Rookie guff counter. For the rookie guff counter to squelch back talk, practice the student's response to deliberate guff. Pick a student, invite back talk, say that sounds like guff. Students practice, they hold up their hand, they say please stop. And if you rehearse the please stop. That in itself will reduce back talk. That's a huge point. Rehearsing the guff counter in itself will reduce the back talk. Don't forget rehearsal. It's like forgetting to practice if you're going to play a game of championship tennis. Here's your challenge, rookies. You've advanced to the rookie level when repeated practice of your cue that sounds like guff produces the vigorous, instantaneous response of please stop from your students. That is the rookie level. Here's the pro level. At the pro level, you're actually using the guff counter. The class is united behind your leadership, and, and kids may be responding a little too quickly. So you're to the pro level when it's really working. Here's your challenge. You've advanced to the pro level when you respond to every instance of back talk, eye rolling, mumbling under the breath with sounds like guff or where is my guff marker. You are a pro guff counter person when you don't let any guff go by without using the guff counter. No scolding, taking the glasses off.
Look at me. Don't scold. In Missouri, we say, don't spit in your soup. Isn't that a wonderful, creepy analogy? When you scold, you're spitting in your soup. You're making the situation nauseatingly worse for you. Anybody out there going to back me up on this, that scolding makes it worse for them and you? Who will back me up in my live online audience? I want to I want to see. Oh, Rebel says amen. Kalani K says, "Oh yeah." Mrs. Repco says, "Yeah." And you know what? If you've got a kid who hits another kid, that's a safety issue. They go to the office. You want them on your side. And Varner K, you're right. The problem, the problem with classroom management is you, is the manager. You don't manage. You shoot from the hip. Wow, you shot yourself in the foot shooting from the hip. Here we go. All-star guff counter. You're an all-star when you have a guffless classroom. Encounters with back-talking students is eliminated, and it is entirely possible. And you're right, Jay Loftus. They hear it at home much worse than you can ever give it to them at school. So you are an all-star when your guff counter produces a week of a guffless classroom. So I'm asking our pros out there right now. Pros? That's anybody in red, just the red I want to respond. Have you got guff under control? Have you been able to have a guffless week? Be honest now, pros. Names in red, let's see what you say. Guffless week. Let's wait and see what our... Nancy says, yes, she's an all-star. She's eliminated guff. And she's got some tough kids up there, up in the desert. Shipley says, easy. Blizzard says, not yet. Who else? Lindsay? Sarah? You know, Sarah, yeah, they get off their meds. It's a little tough. Lindsay, what do you say? Have you got guff under control for your Ohio third graders? Blizzard, give it a try. And Blizzard, we need a movie from you. All right, Southern, work on it. Nancy, how many viewers do we have? All right. Here's the... Here's the scoreboard level again. Next week, we're going to talk about the independence, but we still got a lot of goodies coming for you tonight, my friends. Marge says, with all these levels, my class will be like a living video game. Yes, Marge, you're right. Here's a huge point. Use a tally sheet to keep track of this stuff. Keep yourself under control and make a mark every time you use the scoreboard or the super improver or practice cards or guff counter, whatever you want. Use a tally sheet. So here's a brain fact. Who's excited about a brain fact? One of our most popular segments. Brain fact coming at you. This is a good one. This is about dopamine. Dopamine is a chemical the brain releases 
when it feels pleasure. When you happily eat a good meal, the happiness you feel is the result of dopamine flooding your brain. Runner's high is produced by dopamine. Right now, if you're feeling excited, your brain is a dopamine pump. Addictive substances also produce dopamine. Dopamine is what crack cocaine releases in the brain. Here's a little graphic. Now, look here. The blue arrows, you see the blue arrows here? The blue arrows are the dopamine pathways. Deep inside the brain, near the hippocampus, that produces memories. The dopamine floods up into the prefrontal cortex. That's your reasoning area. And dopamine functions are reward, pleasure, fine-tuning of motor function, compulsion, and perseveration. Brand new word, perseveration. The tendency to persevere. So when you're getting the dopamine jolt, you're feeling happiness. You're feeling a compulsion to continue the behavior that gave it to you. And you persevere. Now, what's that have to do with whole brain teaching? I'll tell you. Here's the new information. Researchers were surprised to discover that dopamine is released when people engage in acts of kindness. I'm going to put that in boldface right now. Isn't that shocking? Acts of kindness reduce dopamine. Kindness is a dopamine releaser. In one of WBT's most popular videos from Lindsay Rausch, students engaged in creating an oral essay. Occasionally a student says, help me, and classmates immediately pitch in with advice. When I show this video, teachers always exclaim, ah, when they see the help me. It's audible in the auditorium. I believe that teachers are getting a jolt of dopamine by observing kindness. That's my claim. We know that if you watch a physical activity, the motor areas of your brain are mirroring that activity. When you see someone being kind and it makes you feel good, you're getting a dopamine observational jolt. Now pay attention. Practice the help me in class. Occasionally pretend that you don't know what to say next. Exclaim, help me, and teach your kids they should spontaneously give you assistance. Try help me a few times a day. See how long before the kids use help me themselves. Everybody is giving each other a shot of kindness, dopamine. Anybody out there, any of my veterans, <coughs> using the help me. Everybody talks at once. It's the only time we allow everyone to talk at once in the help me. Help me is powerful, says Nancy, out in the desert. Now the big choice. Here's a zingy bonus. Coach B started teaching college philosophy courses in 1971. Perhaps you weren't even born then. He taught, among other subjects, Introduction to Philosophy for 40 straight years. Coach taught Introduction to Philosophy in every way you can imagine, which was quite a lot of ways. I made thousands of mistakes. I made more mistakes than there were stars in the sky. 
and after only seven years, Coach became frustrated. He almost made a big, whomping mistake. Coach B saw that he could think of the problems of teaching in two ways. The problem was either his students or how he taught them. Many of Coach B's college th colleagues thought the problem was the students. They were lazy. They're poorly prepared. They didn't care about anything. They had no motivation. Very tempting to think this way about students. I realized I stood at a crossroads. If I thought the problem was the students, there was nothing I could do. I couldn't fix the students. There are too many of them. They had too many problems. However, if I thought I was the problem, then I knew what to do. Change my technique. The first path, the student's path, led into dark, miserable woods. The second path, the teacher path, leads slowly, very slowly upward on a rocky, beautiful climb. My friends, glasses coming off. You are at the crossroads every day. If you say the problem is the kids, get ready for a bad day because you cannot change the kids. There's too many of them. If you say the problem is me, you can change you. That's the crossroads. Don't blame it on the kids or you're heading into the dark woods. Everybody with me. Another zingy bonus. Here's the zingy bonus, all these resources. I'll send you all these resources if you order the slides. And now a really good one. Our last segment of the program, the mystery thing lesson. A story time, folks. I'm going to tell you a story about when I met Cesar Chavez on a moonlit road. Who is so excited they can hardly sit still. They want to hear the story time. Now, mystery thing is what we're saying is a special moral lesson. You bring something into class and you talk about it and the kids try to figure out what the lesson is. Yes, Coach B and Cesar Chavez on a moonlit road. Here it comes. True story. You figure out the lesson. One of Coach B's mystery things would be a farm worker's logo. I'd bring it in one day for my class. 30 years ago, Coach B worked for the United Farm Workers. He was a photographer and a writer for the union's newspaper, El Malcriado. El Malcriado means bad boy. The union's headquarters was in La Paz, high in the hills above California's San Joaquin Valley. One night, Coach B was walking down a dirt road at La Paz, and he saw Cesar Chavez. The great farm leader stood in the moonlight with his two guard dogs, Welga and Boycott. Welga is Spanish for strike. Usually there are many people around Cesar. When he spoke to crowds, you were deeply moved about the plight of farm workers. You wanted to pick up a torch, march off, and burn down City Hall. I first saw Cesar Chavez in the early 70s in the barrio of Colton, California. He came to a little park, La Placita, and he just talked so calmly about farm workers. Greatest speaker 
I ever heard because it was pure, honest sincerity without a lot of falderall. Greatest speaker I ever heard. And here I was on a moonlit road looking at the man. Cesar Chavez looked up and saw Coach B. Coach B's heart thudded. He was going to talk to one of the greatest men of the 20th century. Perhaps they could talk for a long time. Cesar Chavez said, hi. Coach B said, hi, and walked on as if he was thinking of something very important. What's the lesson? You tell me, my friends. What's the lesson to be learned from that story? Don't let opportunity pass you by, says Southern Teacher. That's a good lesson. That's the story, as painful as it is. Seize the opportunity, says Michelle. Even the little things can mean a lot. Don't be shy. There's a good lesson there for us all. Now it's time to play. I didn't talk to him. I had it, the moment, and I walked on by. Yes, my friends, I regret it. But at least, perhaps you can learn something from Coach B's experience. It's time to play You Bet Your Wibby. Here's how we're going to play. Get a piece of paper out right now. You're going to need a piece of paper to play You Bet Your Wibby. You are going to self-score yourself. Everybody ready to play, you bet your wibby. Don't worry about what a wibby is. Just get ready to play. You're going to be self-scoring. Piece of paper and a pencil. Get ready to make some tally marks. You're going to see how close you are to all-star status. I'm going to take a drink. I'll give you a chance. Get ready. Come on now. You're going to see how close you get to all-star. This is not going to be for grade levels. This is just going to be for you. Here we go. We're going to review everything we've talked about over the last 10 weeks, and you give yourself points. If you are using class yes consistently, give yourself one point. If you use class yes boom, give yourself two points. And if you're using core knowledge, yes, give yourself three points. Everybody with me. You either get one point or two points or three points. And if you don't know what this stuff is, look in the webcasts. Blizzard, get on and tell people what number these webcasts are. All right. So one, two, or three points you got so far. Here's the next one. Week two, mirrors. If you're using mirror words, give yourself a point. If you're using silent mirrors, you're a pro. Give yourself two points. Three points if you use magic mirrors. So now you could have as many as six points from the last two weeks. Here's the next round of You Bet Your Wibby. Classroom rules. You are reviewing the classroom rules. You're leading the rules. You're having a kid lead the rules. That's two points. And if you're using rules callouts, if you know what a rule callout is and you're using it, give yourself three points. If you don't, look at the webcast. Blizzard is going to help you out. So now you could have up to nine points. 
It's score time. Who's got how many points? You could have zero to nine. Let me see it. Where are you from? How many points you got? You're playing You Bet Your Wibby. Marvin has six. Not bad, Marvin. Give me a few more. Jill's got five. Marianne's got seven. Indiana's got seven. Sarah Metter's got eight. Western Mass has got seven. Michelle Shelton's got eight. Blizzard's got eight. Oregon's got four. Illinois is five. All right. Nancy and Palmdale's got nine, and I believe it. Chicago, pick it up. You got four. You can come on, Chicago. All right, here we go. More you bet your Wibby. Rules implementation. If your kids follow directions quickly because a rule won, give yourself a point. If they're following rules one to four, give yourself two points. And if your kids really are following all five rules, give yourself three points. That's week four. Week five, are you using Teach OK Be Honest? If you're using Teach OK 10 times a day, give yourself a point. If you're using it 20 times a day, give yourself two points. And if you can give two sentence micro lessons all day, you're an all star. That's three points. Who? Just tell me how many points are you giving yourself for the Teach OK? One, two, or three? How are you doing? Because Teach OK is central. You talk too much, so do I. Jill, 10 times a day is just rookie level. Pick it up, my friends. We're talking too long. The longer we talk, the more kids we lose. Nancy, good job. Kirkwood, thanks for being honest. Amazing. Thank you, Hawaii O-Pal. We love to talk, and we create disruption by talking too much. Scoreboard. Here it is. If you use the scoreboard and you're marking 20 marks a day, one point. Two points if you're using the scoreboard for 30 marks a day. You're an all-star, 40 marks a day. Score yourself right now. What are we doing? We have turned the classroom into a game, and now we're turning, it just occurs to me, whole brain teaching into a game. I think I may have frozen up. Did I freeze up? Hey, my friends, I'm back. I'm working on the video webcast. I think next week we're going to have them smoother. But is everybody seeing me now? All right, here's the scoreboard. 20, 30, or 40. We're turning whole brain teaching into a game called You Bet Your Wibby. All right, Super Improver. Are you using the Super Improver at all? You're giving him lots of praise and few stars. That's a point. If you've given kids individual improver goals, that's two. And if you started the Super Improver Odyssey with Mysterion, that's three points. Anybody tried the Super Improver Odyssey? Starting after the ho holidays, says Conk Girl. Now, Week 8 was a review, so no points scored there. Week 9, practice cards. Now, I say it's too early for purple or green cards. 
So if you're using rookie white cards, give yourself a point. And guff counter. Are you rehearsing the guff counter? Give yourself a point. Have you implemented the guff counter? Give yourself two. And have you scored a guffless week? Give yourself a three. Mini V28, yes, I'll give you a point for waiting until after Christmas. Ragalar, it's in your back pocket. So here it is. If you have zero to three points, you're a Wibbeteer fan. Get off the bench and get in the game. If you scored four to seven, you're a Wibbeteer rookie. Eight to 11, Wibbeteer phenom. 12 to 15, a Wibbeteer leader. 16 to 19, Wibbeteer, Wibbeteer captain. 20 to 23, Wibbeteer pro. If you have more than 27 points, check your math. All right. How many points have you got? Just tell us how many points you've got and where you're from. Let's go, my friends. Cross country, let's hear it. Leaders, 12, 13, 24 in Kansas. Illinois has got 15. Rookie in Cincinnati, 26 in Palmdale. Nine points, says Page Art. Look at all the Floridas. I'm going to Florida this time. In a few days. Illinois, yes. Oh, my friends, this is fantastic. So here's Mrs. Linenthal. Gosh, the Gov Counter sounds great, but how could I get professional development credit for this broadcast and a copy of these slides? Mrs. Linenthal, how's that cold? So much better, Coach. I could hardly talk last week. Oh, goodness. Good to be able to talk. Ms. Linenthal, always good to hear you. So if you want a copy of these slides, $5.66 it's going to cost you, my friends. You go to PayPal right here on our website. Put in $5.66, and I'll send you a copy of the slides. Professional Development Certificate, two-sided. And you know what's on next week, my friends? Rebel Clicks. Do you have a click of rebels who reinforce each other? Independence. Oh, yeah, that's week 11. And my friends, I'll tell you what. I believe Sarah Metter is still online. We are starting a new program at Whole Brain Teaching. We start a new program about once every 10 minutes. So this is the new one. I want to give you and your colleagues a free Skype session. Oh! So, if you've got 20 or 30 colleagues who'd like a one-hour Skype session from Coach B, Sarah Metter, I hope, is still online, and she's going to put her email address up. Go to my Facebook page. Here it is. I'll go to the Facebook page right now. I'm going to Facebook. Skype sessions normally don't cost anything because we haven't done them for a while. We've never done them. So I'm going to Facebook here. And here I am at Facebook. This is Whole Brain Teaching Facebook. And down here, but the second or third article is information about these free Skype sessions. 
So, you want a Skype session? Contact Sarah Metter. Go to the Skype page, and WBT has not Skyped in the past. All right, my friends, you're right. An hour flies by when you're having fun. We got dopamine highs today, my friends. Let me go over the Skype sessions one more time. Full information on the Whole Brain Teaching Facebook page. My friends, I'm delighted to be back with you another week. Your prayers for my family have been deeply appreciated, and I must say this has been one of our best weeks. So keep those prayers coming, my friends. And we're getting on a dopamine high every Monday night. <coughs> All right, who are you? Where are you from? Let that information pour down the screen. Who are you? Where are you from? What grade do you teach? Let's see it. <coughs> Page, Arizona. Pensacola, Florida. Sydney, Nebraska, South Carolina, Harlem, Georgia, South Jersey, Parma, Ohio, Indiana, Orlando, Florida, a lot of Florida folks, Washington, Kissimmee, Florida, Honolulu, first grade, Lubbock, Texas. My friends, it's Coach B signing off. Thank power to the teachers. We'll see you in a week. Pick up your Wibby. We'll play You Bet Your Wibby next week, and I want to see some higher scores out there. Tell me this. What is your goal for next week? How many points are you going to increase on You Bet Your Wibby? Let's have some predictions. Let's have some accountability here. Who's going to pick up their scores by how much? Two or three points. Good. Increased by four. Sheldon says she's going for 27. Two or three points would be good. Kalani KK, you keep changing your name. You're getting my attention there. Couple of points, says Pageart. All right, my friends, see you next week.